today, stupid. It's Saturday. Oh, boy, Saturday. Saturday? Oh, my God! But you'll have on a scoot in your stomach. Anyways, I never saw you so boiling anxious to get to your music lesson on time before. Music lesson? Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. Then what were you in such a hurry to get to? Baseball again. Running yourself ragged with a lot of rough boys. Important game. You eat your food, miss. Good food deserves to be chewed good. Ten times to every mouthful. One. You come right back here and finish your breakfast. Hey, you! Who are you calling, hey, you? What's the matter? You weren't at practice on time. Listen, do you realize today we play the Chestnut Street Indians? Of course I realize it. Just because you're the pitcher, you don't have to act like you're the complete brains of the whole entire team. Well, I suppose you think you're so rugged, you don't even have to come to practice. I'm just as rugged as you are, Hank Evans. Yeah? Yeah. Well, come on, get your big feet on over to the field. Now, that's no way for a boy to talk to a nice little girl, is it? Gee, I guess I mostly forget she is a girl. I wish everybody would forget it. I'm coming. Yeah. But first, I gotta stop for my music lesson. Oh, how long will it take? Half an hour. Then there'll be no time to practice. If we lose this game, we'll lose the whole city championship, and it'll be all your fault. It'll be your fault if you don't pay some attention to my signal. You think you're just about the most rugged character in the whole world. Oh, who's rugged? So Cleef? I got some thing. Good heavens. Could it be laryngitis? I don't know. Well, it isn't red, but with laryngitis, the throat isn't sore. You just lose your voice. I don't think you ought to try to sing. You ought to see a doctor. Yes, you go right down to your father's office. I'll, I'll phone your father and tell him you're coming. Oh! I guess I'm earning you, Miss Adams, but Mama likes me to be on time. Very fortunate, Robbie. Mickey is just leaving. Oh, hello, Mickey. What's the matter with her? Laryngitis. It came on her all of a sudden. Now you bundle up real good, dear, around your throat and go right straight home. Oh, 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 come on, 
on, Canary. Get a move on. Now I won't even get a chance to warm up. Be quiet. She'll hear you. I heard you. Laren Josh. Shut up. You want Miss Adams to hear? Sure I want Miss Adams to hear. You wouldn't dare tell her. Oh, no. This will pay you back for putting that snake in my desk. Robbie, please. Oh, I don't mind waiting while you come back and finish your letter. Don't you hit me. I've got my glasses on. Now you haven't, you squealer. Oh, right, you. How's that feel? Fine, I guess. That's Mother's brave boy. You know, I can't understand those lacerations on your knuckles. Uh, you say you didn't hit Mickey? When she knocked my glasses off, I stooped to pick them up. That's when she stepped in my hand. Oh, but sneakers with rubber soles, uh... What was the battle all about? Oh, she thought I was going to tell Miss Adams that Mickey didn't really have laryngitis. That she was just saying that to get out of her lesson. But I would never squeal on anybody. Oh, I, I'm afraid you must have misunderstood, Robbie. Mickey wouldn't lie to Miss Adams. Oh, let's forget the whole thing, George. It was just a childish quarrel. You run along, Robbie. Mother will be out in a minute. Robbie, I'm sorry this happened. I'll have your glasses repaired. Now, George, you'll do no such thing. I insist. Uh, oh, doctor, you don't think this injury will affect my violin playing, do you? I'm afraid not, Robbie. Lydia, sometimes I don't know what to do about Mickey. Oh, she'll outgrow this tomboy phase. But I do wish for your sake she wouldn't antagonize people. At least until after the appointment for the new hospital has been made. Mrs. Dinning says I ought to marry some sensible woman and give Mickey a mother. Know any sensible women? Well, I'm the most sensible woman I know. <laughs> then you wouldn't want a doctor. No, I'll never marry again. Excuse me, Dr. Kelly. Mickey's music teacher is on the phone. She wants to know how her laryngitis is. Tell her it's just taken a turn for the worse. explanation for it. Well, could I help it if Miss Ridley's chickens got out in the road? And anyway, the driver of the car paid her more than the skinny old rooster was worth. So I don't see why she sore at me. Didn't even know about Miss Ridley's chickens. Mickey, let your father tell you what you suspected of. These belong to Robbie Matthews before you broke them. I thought I pulled them off of him real carefully. You shouldn't have pulled them off at all. No, sir. Now, I've ordered him some new ones. They'll cost $30. How do you suggest you pay for them? Thirty dollars? Oh, my gosh. There's my pig bank and my Christmas check. Maybe you'd better get them. She's been saving that to get a motor scooter. Got her heart set. But Bertha, she's got to find out she can't get away with it all the time. I've been too indulgent. It's bad for her. Who says so, Mrs. Matthews? There's only about eight dollars in the pig, so I guess she'll have to cut off my allowance for about... about 38 weeks. And here's my Christmas check back. Mickey, listen, I don't like this any more than you do. But after all, I've got to be drastic, haven't I? Yeah, I guess you've got to be pretty drastic. Last week, you promised me no more playing or fighting with boys. But gosh, Dad, I thought you realized I had to play in the second to the last big game of the season. Next week, we play with the East Side hoodlums. That's just what you act like, a hoodlum. And you a girl. Girls. Nothing but mush and slush. 
Well, you're going to be a girl all your life, so you might as well get used to it. Now, this is my last word. No more playing with boys. Pay more attention to your music instead. You've got a good voice, and your mother wanted you to make the most of it. For heaven's sake, go and have a bath. I had a bath. Well, have another. It's on the house. Right away. Let me hear you get started. That's Mrs. Matt. Look what she made me do. What's she got to do with it? You'll find out when she marries your father and starts running this house like she does the whole town. I wouldn't mind my father getting married, but why would anybody want to marry her? Well, she's real pretty, and she's real rich, and she talks as sweet as this, but inside of her, she's more like this. And I wouldn't trust her as far as I could throw this kitchen stove. Look at what happened to her first husband. What happened? He died as a monk. Now, you can't tell me any full-grown American man is going to let himself die as a month unless he's sick and tired of living. And that's just what he was. Sick and tired of hopping when she said hopping, jumping when she said jump. So he took the first little excuse he could find to get away from her. Rest this poor, sad soul. Oh, Bertha, we can't let that happen to my father. Vicky, I don't hear your bath running. Yes, yes, I'll be there. Goodbye. Bertha! I won't be home for dinner tonight. I have to make a call out toward Lakewood. Oh, now, Dr. Kelly, all my good supper. And Mickey's been counting on you being home just this one night. Oh, I'm sorry, Bertha. I hate to leave her alone all the time like this. Beginning next week, I promise I'll be home every night. I absolutely promise. But you stay with her tonight, will you? I may be late. No, sir, I got my own kids to look after. When it gets dark, I got to be there, keep my eye on them. But your husband's there with them. But my husband's a man. You don't think I'd trust my kids to a man, do you? No, sir, when it gets dark, I got to get on home. going to marry that Mrs. Matthews. Robbie Matthews' mother? What's he want to do that for? It's her that wants it, only we gotta stop it. Because he'll have to hop when she hop and skip when she says skip. So come on over and help me. First, I gotta move all my stuff out of my room. My aunt's coming to visit, and I gotta sleep in the sewing room. What aunt? My mother's sister. Her name's Louise. She's a career woman in New York. She works for a magazine. Fashions and clothes and stuff. A model. Jeepers. Hey, is she married? No. You mean for your father? Anything would be better than that Mrs. Matthews. Then we'd practically be sisters. I think they're coming now. Dad went to meet her at the station. The house looks even more restful than I remembered it. Yes, it'll be a nice quiet spot for you, Lou where you can sit and relax and forget about everything. And, uh, everybody. Oh, I'll forget him, all right. It would be a perfect place for me to mend my poor little jilted heart. Gosh, she's no glamour puss. She looks keen to me. No lipstick and fuss and feathers. She'll probably look more gorgeous after she's had a bath and has put some of her good clothes on. A bath! Oh, my gosh!
sit here, and you put your aunt over here next to it. And these panels were a swell idea, Mickey. You probably won't look more than 20. I don't care how old she is. I think you're a super. She'd like to, too, right away. I think the guy in New York that jilted her is crazy in the head. He didn't exactly jilt her. I heard her and Mother talking. It was a difference of opinion. Now, don't tell me there's something wrong with the light. No, we turned them out. Candlelight, it's much smarter that way. Hmm. Well, I like to see what I'm using. There's my dad now. What did he say when you told him she was coming over for supper? Haven't told him yet. Thought I'd let it be kind of a surprise. Well, I'll rush over as soon as I can. She was all dressed. Only she's wearing that same darned old suit. She didn't bring much else. Bertha, close these doors. It's like a seance to me. Hello, Dad. Hi, Meg. Oh, what a day. Hang it up, will you, honey? Listen, Dad, you better not start taking off your clothes. I've got a friend coming to stop with. Kathy's seen me in my shirt sleeves before. But another friend's coming, too. I'm always glad to see your little friends, Mickey. But this one isn't so little. Oh, my gosh, here they are. Hello, Mickey. Hello. It's nice of you to ask me over. Come on in. Charlie's dead. What? That always means your slip is showing. Oh. Dad, Kathy's here, and, um, Miss Louise Williams. Well, uh, hello there, Kathy and Louise. Glad you kids could come over. Uh. This is Kathy. Dinner is served. That was a wonderful dinner. Please tell Bertha for me. Uh, more coffee? Please. <clears throat> Didn't forget the perfume, did you? The perfume? Oh, no. Boy, that's glamorous, all right. What's the name of it? A more dinette? It's more than we. It's French. It means in the middle of the night. Let's hope it works this early. You owe me 35 cents for it. Couldn't you get anything more reasonable? They're getting up. I'll leave this open so they can hear the music. Hey, J.L. usually plays a lot of mushy records. Your father's got a look on his face I never saw before. They're looking at each other in a very exotic way. <laughs> They're playing my father's favorite song. Open the window wider so he can hear it, Kathy. Mickey? Is that you? What are you doing out there? Oh, nothing. Just tooling around. What does that mean? I asked Kathy that. She said it just meant tooling around. Oh, do you mind the smell of a pipe? No, I love it.
going. Did my singing help any? Sure it did. She looks real sentimental. And she had tears in her eyes. Now she's standing up. She's not going home, is she? They were smiling at each other, and he was putting out the fire. So I bet they're going out for a nice long walk in the moonlight. Oh, boy. Old Lady Matthews will never get him now. I had no idea you had such a wonderful voice, Missy. Your song made me feel very romantic. Did it? Mm-hmm. It made me remember somebody I said I was going to try and forget. I wasn't going to tell him where I am, but... Your song made me feel differently. So, I'm going home and writing. Thank you, Nikki. Good night. See you later, Kathy. You sang very well, Mickey. Miss Williams thought it was the radio. You know, that song made me remember so many things. Your mother and how anxious she was for you to have all the things a girl needs to grow up to be a lady. Well, I think I'll just stroll over and see Ms. Matthews. I won't be late, I don't think. Night, Kathy. Nice meeting your aunt. You sure sang him into a romantic mood, Mickey. Yeah. Why didn't I just keep my big mouth shut? Perfumes don't have the body to them that this has. Mickey, you dressed and ready yet? Your father will be along any minute. I'm dressed all right. How do you like the new address? It didn't seem to look like that in the store when I bought it. Not the dress first, that's me. I'm just not the female type. Wish I was dead, that's all. You be careful what you wish, young lady. Sometimes the worst thing can happen is we get our wishes. Yeah, but why did fate have to make me a girl? And a singing girl? You'll sing real good at the recital, and we'll all be proud of you. And you look real pretty. Maybe that dress does need a sash or something. Wouldn't make any difference. I don't see why I couldn't wear a sweater like the rest of the Glee Club. Because you're the leading one. And when you're up there singing your solo, you're going to look real cute. You better wait out on the porch for your father. walking zombie you dressed up to be. Didn't I tell you to be early for the game? I'm not going to the game. Not going? Hey, what have you got on all that spinach for? You always sidle. You mean you'd rather sing than play ball? I mean I'm not going to play, so go on to your darned old game. Well, I guess the fellas were right when they told me not to let a girl on the team. Now we'll probably lose because of you, you sissy. Oh, I hope you choke on a high C. Come on, Mickey. We're all going in Miss Matthews' car. Don't they make an adorable pair? They look like brother and sister. Now hear Mickey Kelly sing, Someday My Prince Will Come Along. Someday. 
Mickey did that. Who knows why Mickey does anything? Robbie Matthews will now play. Red, you power lines, melody, and You're air. wrecking the whole recital, you termite. You made us lose the game, you sissy. Come down here and I'll show you who's a sissy. Yeah, come on up and get me if you're so rugged. your hand too? No. Something in it I, I wanted to keep. I don't know why. I yanked it out of his head this afternoon when we were fighting. It's a chunk of Hank Evans' hair. So what do you think's the matter with me anyway? How old are you, Mickey? Almost 15. Well, most people fall in love around your age. In love? with? Hank? Oh, no. I hate him. Then why are you keeping his hair? I don't know. Well, I think that's why. It's nothing so terrible, Mickey. It happens to everybody. Why, when I was 16, I was crazy about my chemistry teacher. But Hank Evans, that muscle-bound drip. How can you be in love with someone you don't even like? Well, I'll admit, some of us go about it the hard way. Sometimes we fall in love with people who, who aren't exactly suitable, for one reason or another. But at your age, Mickey, you don't have to worry about that. Thanks, Kathy. I'll go right up. She's all right. At least she will be when she gets over the shock. Kathy said her mind seemed to be wandering. Nothing, really. Just a touch of spring. What's that got to do with it? What happens to young people in the spring? Well, they get measles or chicken pox. Uh-huh, and some of them get an acute case of puppy love. Oh, but she's just a little girl. Big enough. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Oh, but you can't be absolutely sure without going into it a little more thoroughly. I'm afraid love doesn't show up on an x-ray. And you won't be needing that. Oh, but isn't there something we can do about it? Believe me, if I knew what, I'd do it myself. Have a talk with her. Give her some good advice. You mean... Tell her the facts of life! Hello, Mickey. How you feeling? Okay. Lucky you didn't break any bones fighting with that young hoodlum. What's his name? Hank Evans. Hank who? Evans. Hank Evans. Uh, Mickey. Yes, Dad? It's spring, you know. Yeah, I know. 
Well, you know what happens in the spring, don't you? Sure. Baseball. No, no, I meant inside people. Bronchitis? No, honey. I mean emotionally. Something happens emotionally in the spring. Well, you've heard the old saying, in the spring, uh, a young man's fancy lightly turns to love. Oh, that. Well, it's spring now, and that's where everybody's thoughts are turning. Everybody? Perfectly natural. You too. So you see, it's perfectly natural if you understand about, uh, well, life. And it's easy to understand, too, although at some ages it's rather hard to understand. But if you listen to me, I'll try and explain it to you so you'll understand. I think you're old enough now to uh, understand. I'm listening. Well, it's like this, see. At some ages, a person doesn't know certain facts, which at some later age he does know. See what I mean? Yes, no. Well, uh, you're in an age where you're a little too young to have learned some things, and I'm at an age where I'm able to explain them to you. So that's what I'm doing. You are? As I said before, in the spring, nature, well, uh, takes its course. All perfectly simple and natural, nothing to be ashamed of. Now take uh, plants. No, take birds, they're alive. Yes, we'll take birds. Now, you know how in the spring there'll be a bird out in the tree, out, out on a limb. Out uh, on a limb. Well, this bird will be singing away, and then along will come its mate, and they'll be there together out on a limb, in the spring moonlight, singing to each other, and then take people. No use beating around the bush, we'll take people. Now, in the spring, or sometimes in the summer, or even in the winter, people find that they like other people. Like, for instance... Like you and Mrs. Matthews. Listen, Dad. If there's something about falling in love that you don't understand, don't do anything about it till you read a book Kathy's got called Facing Life Bravely. You seem pretty confused about that sort of thing, and, well, you could get into a lot of trouble. So maybe I'd better borrow that book for you. Yes. Maybe you'd better borrow it for me. Oh, uh, Mickey, what was the name of that book? Facing Life Bravely. Facing Life Bravely. Guess that old generation must be pretty naive. You aren't so bright either. Out of all the people in the world, you have to fall in love with a dumb cluck like Hank Evans. for a fight. I still got one left. I don't want to fight anymore. Thought I'd come over and see what you were doing. I'm just tooling around. Well, here's a tool. Go on to a tight while I hit her. Ouch! You let the wrench wobble. I'm awfully sorry. Oh. Okay, let's try again. And don't wobble. You're rugged about everything, aren't you? What's the matter with you today? You sick or something? No. You asked anyone to the school dance next Friday night? Uh-uh. I've never been to any of the school dances. Never cared for that mushy stuff. No, I can't see you trotting around that dance floor. But I thought I might go to this one. You know, just to check what it's like. They're all alike. What do you want to bother for? It's not your kind of fun. Did somebody ask you? No, not yet. Don't any of the boys like me, Hank? Sure, kids all think you're keen. Naturally, they wouldn't ask you to a dance. They know how you hate that kind of mush. So we said you wouldn't be caught dead at once. Yeah, I guess that's what I said. Hey, oh, hi. We're going to ride the Sir Mall. Come on. Oh, OK, Janet. You don't want to come, do you? Who would 
ask you. Mickey, Bertha said I should come right up. Guess what? I had a letter from Ted. Remember the one you made me write to? He's driving out here next weekend. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah, I guess so. He says he has something important to tell me. Mickey, what's the matter? Oh, my whole entire life is just one tragic mistake after another. First I go and fall in love with a dumb clock I can't even stand the sight of. And then, then I go and find out that all the boys think I'm an ugly pig. A what? An ugly pig, a zombie, a goon. Character the rest of the kids, especially the boys, have no use for. Oh, you mean a wallflower? I guess the older generation called them that. But whatever they call them, that's me. Oh, it's not true, Nikki. You're a very sweet, pretty girl. Yeah, look at me. Nobody would be caught dead with me, and I don't blame them. <laughs> Nikki, don't cry. I'm not. Listen, honey. <laughs> Nothing so bad it can't be fixed. Tell me about it so I can help you. What could you do? You don't care how you look either. Oh, I didn't mean that. I only meant that you wouldn't know about my trouble. I'm sorry. The man looked twice. Hey, Kathy, what's everybody wearing to the dance Friday night? It's going to be in formal clothes. What? We're all going in formal clothes. Informal. Okay. Informal. No, sir. My gosh, you don't even know what I want. Listen, Bertha, I just got to have something new to wear Friday. And I won't be getting any allowance for 36 more weeks. But if you'd loan me the money, I'd pay it back to you. Absolutely not. I can get a swell job babysitting for Mrs. Newey. And it pays big money. Here. Goodbye. I'm not going anywhere. I wasn't saying goodbye to you. Hi, Mickey. Kathy's still downstairs. Her mother won't let her leave until she finishes her piano practice. Super. I hope Ted will think so. Look what he sent me. Oh, my gosh, an orchid. You sure look glamorous tonight. So will you. Knock them dead, Mickey. You knock them dead, too.
Hi, Mickey. Got your night, Mick? No. This is Friday night, isn't it? Sure, dance night. I thought maybe you expected it was a track meet. One, how you kids were getting along. I have to get on home and get dressed. I have a real date for later. Well, I don't know where you'd scare off a date. All the kids in school are here tonight. Oh, it's with someone you don't know. An older man. A real smoothie. Is that you? Did you knock him dead? Yeah. I knocked him dead all right. Then he killed him. They died laughing. Oh, Mickey, what happened? Nothing except everybody else was all dressed up and real formal. And you wore that? Yeah. Don't I look gorgeous? Oh, I should be shot. You? Why? Oh, I should have helped you. I should have asked you what you were wearing. Come on upstairs with me. We'll find something for you to wear and you can go back to the party. Oh, no, I, I can't do that. I told them all I had a real formal date with an older man. I had to say something. They were all standing there laughing at me, so I lied. And it was a lie, and tomorrow they'll all find it out and laugh some more. I don't think it was a lie, Nikki. I think it was a, a daydream. Sometimes daydreams come true. Nice to see you, too. Dear Louise, you look wonderful. That rest really did you good. You look wonderful. Thanks. I'm sorry my sister and her husband aren't here so you could meet them. They're chaperoning a school dance. Now, what was all that telephone conversation about taking somebody else out? Ted, you do me an enormous favor. I'd be crazy if I didn't. Mickey, hurry down, dear. Your date's here. Hey, wait a minute. Ted, Mickey's the girl I phoned you about. I want you to take her out. Parade her through town. Look mad about her. Dude, I came all the way from New York just to see you. Hello, Mr. Whitney. From now on, my dear, just call me darling. <laughs> Don't you think these high heels make me look at least two inches older? <laughs> Definitely. Here. Oh, I couldn't. It's too beautiful. You can't very well go out in a sweater. Be careful how you sit in that dress. Remember, I've just pinned it in. Go on, have a good time. I'll expect you in about an hour. Optimist. Back by midnight, Cinderella. You're taking an awful chance sending me out of this glamour girl. How about a little service? Oh. Hello, Kitty. Mom. Hi, Will. Hello, Dick. Hi, gang. Hi, fun. Where have you been since the dance broke up? <laughs> Sit down, make yourself homely. Well, get a load of this. Well, she said she had a date, but I didn't. How did Mickey ever latch on to him? He looks smooth. He looks like a wolf to me. Well, my dear, what would you like to have? 
Well, since we're going to hit the high spots later on, I think something light. An orange aid, I guess. That's a good idea. Bring two orange aids, please, and hurry it up, will you? Boy, that Mickey Kelly, she's for me. Why didn't somebody tell me about things like her? I got the idea she was some kind of a zombie. My parents certainly wouldn't let me go out with an old man like that. He must be at least 25. Older than that. Maybe 35. He certainly looks like the worst kind of a wolf to me. Mickey, better watch your step. Uh, do you smoke? Oh, yes, of course. I don't care for any now, thank you. Uh, you pay the cashier. Oh, that's for you. Gee, thanks. Well, here's to a very lovely evening with a very lovely young lady. I love a smooth line. I do get so fed up with the crude stuff the cradle bugs around here pull. Well, darling, shall we toddle? Sure, I've been longing to be alone with you, darling. Well, hello, kid. How was your little school dance? Raining. Good. I hope they both drown. Oh, isn't that sweet? He's putting up the top. I told you he was a wolf. Yeah. An orange aid. Vanilla malt. Make it a double. <laughs> <laughs> She was looking forward to telling you all about it at supper time, and then you didn't come home. Yeah, I know. I had a quick bite in between a broken arm and a tonsillectomy. And that Mrs. Matthews been calling all day, too. Who's upstairs? Kathy? Kathy's aunt. Kathy? Now there's a sweet lady. Mickey ain't home. Oh, hello, Hank. <laughs> She's older than Miss Newey. Yeah. Goodbye. Hello. Hello. How do you like it? Can't believe it. Well, you've lost a son, but you gained a daughter. Oh, money, too. Look. I'd rather look at you. <laughs> no, I mean, look at the pretty new dresses we found. Mm, high heels, too. Mm-hmm. Pretty grown up. Want to help? Why not? Just in time to help me hang this mirror. Mm -hmm. Right here? Oh, this way a little bit. Thanks. Right Thanks. I think I better run along. 
And if the baby wakes up at 10, you can give her a little water. Although we'll probably be home by then, won't we, Tom? We'll still be home by 10 if we don't get going. Now remember, Mickey, nothing but water. Not even one small beer. Tom, it isn't funny. Nothing else, not even if she cries. Of course, Barbara Ann almost never cries. <laughs> oh, dear, I knew this would happen. Uh -oh. Warm water, not too hot. Try it on your wrist. Nothing but water. Who'd you expect, that old goat you were out with last night? I really don't see that that's any concern of yours. After all, a girl can lead her own life if she wants to, can't she? But, Mickey, he's an awful wolf. Now look what you've done. What's the matter, precious? Did that nasty man scare the poor little baby? She wants to drink water,
trying to give him a little shot of water. Oh, dear. Oh. What's the idea, Bub? This baby, she swallowed a pin. We're rushing her to my father's office. Oh, you're the doc's kid. Okay, keep going. I'll clear the road for you. If my father isn't in his office, he can send the cop to find you for us. What do you think they're doing with the x-rays, inventing them? I don't know, but I wish that cop would hurry and find my father. The x-rays show no trace of any foreign matter. But I tell you, there were only three safety pins left. Three! Ouch! Well, whatever happened to the extra one, it isn't in this baby. Jeepers, we better get out of here. Take him. Her. Whatever it is. We can get home before anybody knows we were gone. You know, something serious could have happened. I could have lost my reputation as a competent babysitter. Jeepers, look. There's Mickey Kelly. It can't be. That's a bar. But it is, Mom. She's wearing the same green dress and fur cape she wore last night. And she's with the same man. Ask any of the kids. Ted, I thought I'd like to get home early tonight, and you're leaving tomorrow. Louise, you didn't get a chance of talking last night, but I do have something to tell you. Only I've got to work in my courage to do it. Can't you? Hello. Oh, hello, Lydia. But... But... Let's hang up and get a better connection. I thought you said Mickey was at some bar. You saw her? You sure? The green parrot? Mickey's at Mrs. Newey's. Babysitting. Yes, Lydia. No, Lydia. All right, Lydia. I looked through all the booths. I must have missed her. Are you sure she was here at all? 
perfectly sure, I'm sorry to say. Robbie and I saw them come in with our own eyes. And I described the green dress and the mink cape she was wearing. Mink cape? And the waiter said they had a highball and left. A highball? Where could they have gone? With that wolf and that tan convertible. I bet they went to Giraffe Hill. Where's that? Where people go for a good long neck. I better find that young lady. You call the house. Maybe she's come home. Here's Nickel. Robbie, you run across the street to the county office. There's an important meeting going on. Now talk to Dr. Pearson or Mr. Brent. You know what he looks like. Tell him I've been delayed not to wait for me. Have you got it? Isn't that Dr. Kelly? Looks like him. Well, isn't he coming to the meeting? Doesn't look like it. He's not a drinking man, is he? That kid of his is enough to drive anybody to drink. That's why he was in there. Well, probably an emergency. I'll say it is. Hey, you know where he's going, Bobby? Yes. I'll teach you Rath Hill to look for a girl. A girl? How do you know? I heard him say so. And he said you better not look for him. He might be tied up for the rest of the night. Well, if he doesn't care enough about the appointment to come and get it, he may show up later and explain. If he doesn't, Michael's a good man. Yes. Reliable. Did you give him the doctor's message? Yes, Mother. That's my good boy. I'm glad I have a child I can trust. Him. get scared or not, I can't put off saying it any longer. Ted, I'd rather you wouldn't. But I came here to get things straight between us. I think they are, finally. For the first time, at least I see them straight. I don't think we were ever meant for each other, Ted. Maybe that's why we quarreled so much. But I thought that... We're so different, you and I. We like such different things. For instance, I love this little town and all the people in it. Pardon me, I was looking for someone. You're looking for a punch in the nose, buddy. But Louise, what I've been trying to get up enough courage to tell you is that, well, I'm engaged to a girl in New York. Do I know her? I don't think so. I think it's wonderful. Congratulations. Get away from her, you cradle snatching wolf. Well, this is no reason to jealous. Hey. Stop it, Ted. You'll hurt him, you idiot. You know this, Puck? Of course, he's Mickey's father. Well, too bad. She seemed to be a nice kid. Hey, Doc. I've been hunting all over town for you. Your daughter needs you bad. Had to rush her to the clinic. What's the matter? She's in trouble. With a baby. A baby? <laughs> The whole thing that really ought to worry you, George. Sneaking out with a perfectly strange man. I didn't sneak. If you'd have been home, I'd have told you. I've said all along, George, you've got to be firm with children. Yes, Lydia, I know. I don't blame Mickey as much as I do that woman. Just imagine her encouraging the child to wear that thoroughly unsuitable dress and go out with a strange man old enough to be her father. He was a perfectly polite gentleman. He didn't seem that way to me. That child made a reputation last night that will take her years to live down. And then tonight. I didn't do anything bad tonight. The baby's all right. Of course. It means nothing to you that your father has lost his appointment all because of you. Because of me? Why? Because he was too busy worrying about you to show up at the meeting tonight. Now he's lost everything he's worked so hard for. And everybody in town is talking about you. No use rubbing it in. The child has got to realize that what she does reflects on you. And the next time she comes in contact with an undesirable influence, maybe she'll remember. It's late. Come on, Robbie. We've got to go home.
undesirable influence. It seems I am, Ricky. Even if I don't mean to be. Ricky, you'd better get up to bed. You should be asleep at this hour. How can I sleep when everything's all wrong and it's all my fault? Ricky, your father said to go to bed. child as if she's committed a murder. Just because she couldn't find you for a minute to let you know what she was doing. But you knew. Why didn't you stop her? At least you're old enough to know what's, what's suitable and what isn't. All right, so I let her wear a dress that wasn't suitable. At the moment, it seemed more important to cover her bruised pride than it did to cover her bare shoulders. I don't even know what you're talking about. No, and you won't take time to find out. Even if I did, I wouldn't agree with you. Your sense is obviously haywire. Just to amaze a few kids, you... Dress her up like a plush horse. Send her out with a middle-aged Casanova to Giraffe Hill on a petting party, kissing Aren't and... you getting your nights mixed up? It was me that Ted took to Giraffe Hill. It was me he kissed. I saw him. You needn't brag about it. How do I know the same thing didn't happen to Mickey last night? Because both Mickey and I told you it didn't. Don't you trust either of us? I don't see how I can, after what's happened. Nothing's happened. Except what's going on in your mind. You and that... that sweet Mrs. Matthews. And for a highly moral woman, she certainly got a grim imagination. Let's leave Lydia out of this. I wish I could. She understands this town. You don't. You're from a big city where people don't know your name and don't care. But here, well, Lydia's right. I don't believe it. She'd like you to think so, so you'd think you need her help. I don't like to say that about any woman, George. But I'm thinking of Nikki. So are we. Is it so important if a few gossips whisper about her? Isn't it more important for her to know that her family and those who know her believe in her? Nikki's just a child. She has to be protected even against herself. Nikki's your child. You've known her all her life. You should know she couldn't lie or do anything very wrong. Oh, I'll admit it's more than half my fault. I've neglected her. I've ignored good advice. Mother must have been. Only 
I don't remember her very well. But she couldn't have been any nicer than you. Thank you, Mickey. So I've got to go with you. If you don't take me, I'll run away. I'll have to. I mean it. No use trying to run away, Mickey. No one ever can. Are you? No. My home. People I love aren't here. Nobody will miss me when I'm gone. I'll miss you. And if you don't take me, I'll follow you. If you do, you'll prove everything Mrs. Matthews said about me. That I'm a bad influence. That I coaxed you to run away. Yes, but... You couldn't do that to your father. Think how lonely he'd be. He'd have her. He'll need you more than ever. And, Mickey, you'll find once they're married that she'll be much more understanding. I'm counting on you to be fair to her. Give her a chance to make you like her. Promise me you'll do that. Promise? I promise. I'm proud of you. Now, come on. Let's hurry to the auditorium. I'll just have time to hear you sing before my train leaves. But I can't sing. There's nothing to sing about. Of course there is. Sing just this once more for me before I leave. Say goodbye like that. So I'll have something very nice to remember. Anyway, if you don't, people will say the Kellys are very poor losers. You say you want to sing? But you told me this morning to take you off the program. You said you're soldiers. I think I'd better sing. Well, all right. I'll, I'll have to tell the orchestra leader. I didn't get much chance to talk to you last night, but I wanted to ask you if you'd wear this for me. It's your basketball letter. I want you to wear it. Sew it on your sweater. But Hank, I mean, things like that are for going steady. Well. Maybe you better not. Because the whole town's talking about me. You don't want that kind of a girl. Oh, what do I care what anybody says? I know you couldn't do anything bad. How do you know? Because you're making it. Here, take it. I'll be awful proud if you wear it. Now, we will hear Mickey Kelly sing Dreams in My Heart. Stop whispering. 
wondering and wondering about what it is I did was so terrible. I'll tell you, then you'll know for sure. I didn't particularly want to sing anyway. But I didn't want anybody to think the Kellys were poor losers because we're not. My father says Dr. Merkel will do a good job. And my father should know because he's a very nice man. And it isn't his fault if I make mistakes sometimes. He tries very hard to see that I'm raised right. But sometimes he's too busy looking after your families to look after his own. Someone told him that I was at the Green Parrot. So he went there. Which he never does because he doesn't even allow the stuff in the house. And then he went to Giraffe Hill, where I wasn't there either because I've never been to any of those places. But I don't care what you think of me. I just want you all to know that he's the most wonderful father in this whole wide world. Please be quiet so the young lady can sing for us. But before she does, I'd like to tell her how very proud I'm going to be to work under Dr. Kelly, our chief of staff, in the hospital which his hard work has built for us. Dr. Kelly. very, very much. 